one. Welcome to Sports You. Sports You. Sports. For you. Uncensored. University. For you. Uncensored. Uncensored. For you. What's going on, Bob? What's going on, Gift Man? You know what? You know, first thing first, before we do anything, this podcast is dedicated to the beautiful goddess, Jordan Woods. You gotta bring it up. Shout out to Jordan Woods. Shout out to the masseuse that took that video. <laughs> oh my God. You're a fool, bro. I don't give a damn. Tristan, I ain't mad at you, bro. <laughs> I didn't know she was looking like that either, dude. You're a fool, oh man. my God. It was a it was, it was a good sight to see. Shout I'm, out to lie. shout out Jordan Woods, baby. Thank you. But let's get on with the we real are here show. for one well, reason, one reason only, and that is sports. Sports, you man. Welcome, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get right into it. It's a nice night. It is a nice night. It's a beautiful night out here in Rialto, California, guys. Sorry, guys. We gotta we gotta keep continue to do it outside. You know what's going on right now. Y'all so. know the vibes. Don't act you, different. If you hear a dog or or a car. You hear a motorcycle. Our apologies. Don't get mad. <laughs> Some I'm gonna beat your ass. I, I don't like motorcycles, man. I'm just kidding. All right, so let's get into it here. Let's We're go. gonna start it off with a little bit of baseball. All right. Um, not too much to talk about for baseball for me. Mm-hmm. Um, any shout outs? No, not really. More I like I don't. roasting because what's that that article you sent me about the other day man. from the dude on the Blue Jays? Yeah, so <laughs> was, a guy was... on the Blue Jays. Check this, <laughs> check this shit out. Check this shit out. So a guy on the Blue Jays. He's a catcher, man. I gotta <laughs> look it up. Look it up on your phone while I'm doing this. I got you. <laughs> he you, you he's a he's a catcher. Twitter, right? Yeah, he's a catcher. <laughs> he's a catcher on the Blue Jays, and apparently he got <laughs> arrested for being in a parked car. <laughs> And he was in just a parked car. Yeah, he was. He in was just a wanking car, it, wanking it, <laughs> wanking. <laughs> <laughs> and then people in Canada is different, man. <laughs> he was out here, bro. Bro, you man, make, you, you make thing, too much money to be doing that in your car, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Be like, you have a house. You probably have more than one house. You got a, you got a better house than me and you, bro. Bro, you probably even just, even if you're just like. If if you're just renting someplace, bro, just do it in the house. Exactly. Like, like bro, what, what makes you, it better that's in the car? Honestly, I, I'm low key kind of disappointed that the MLB like didn't do anything uh, heavy with that. Because really that's think, bro. Did, that's did serious. you not pull it up? That's oh my bad. That's um, that's serious, bro. Because I bet you if that was like a person of color, that would probably went totally south. Let, let's 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 keep it going here. Let's not make it political. I'm not trying to, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, uh, Blue Jays catcher Reese McGuire was caught masturbating in a parked car by police earlier this year. And guess what? The Atlanta Braves trolled him by playing Beat It as oh, he walked up was, to bat. That is hilarious. That was from Complex Sports. That is hilarious. Yeah, no, that's... Can you believe that? That they really actually did that to that man. In that type of way, like you're you're mocking a person for being basically like a sexual predator, and they didn't do anything about it. So that, those are the baseball headlines. That's all for baseball. That's folks. all for baseball. <laughs> we got it done. We made sure we got we we gave you guys all the info. <laughs> nah, nah. All right, so so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on right here. And talk actually, something new happened with the Cardinals. Uh, another, I think, another series was canceled. But the ah. Cubs and Cardinals at Cardinals, I think, a uh, series opener was postponed. Uh, the reason why it was postponed was because one uh, uh, St. Louis player tested positive for coronavirus. That would be the eighth Cardinals player since last week. <sighs> pretty pretty crazy amount. So honestly. as of now, eight people on the Cardinals have coronavirus. And that's what's that's what's insane because is Ooh. it like the full sixty? Is it just the forty? Is it because they expanded the rosters a lot for this year? Of course. How many? How much is the roster? I think it's now? sixty or fifty. Sixty. Yeah, sixty. Sounds or 50. about right with sixty. I think it, it might be around there because I think they actually just expanded it. Uh huh. Uh, but, but let's get back to this real quick. So that's eight out of out of maybe the sixty, right? Let's just say right. let's just say best case scenario sixty. Right. Uh, in total this year they have thirteen positive tests. Seven of them from the players and six of them were from the staff. And uh, Yadier Molina was one of them, mm-hmm. uh, and he's he's a multi multi all star multi time all star champion as well. Right, pretty much like the best defensive catcher in the league. Right, uh, just brand wise. Uh, you also have Carlos Martinez. Uh, he's an all star pitcher. Uh, Fifteen day IL 
uh, even though there was no reason given. So maybe if that corona? ain't Corona. I don't know what it is. It might be Corona, man. You never Anyways. know. Uh, so apparently what they were saying is that they got it through uh, asymptom- an asymptomatic person came mm-hmm. in contact with somebody on the team. Mm-hmm. And so eight different people and uh, eight different people got it from that. So mm-hmm. I wonder how close these guys are. It's kind of I think if there's a correlation. Let's say Carlos Martinez does have it. OK. With Yadamir Lina being a catcher. Right. No, he's a pitcher, so I get it. Like, hopefully, it's just that one person spread it to everybody. But hopefully, it's not like infestation over there, man. It, right. it was just one positive test. It sounded like though. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, with that being said, do you believe that the MLB season is gonna gonna finish, man? I, I I highly doubt it. How you feeling? I mean, if we have this happening, if we have, like, the incident with the Marlins where they went to a casino, you know what I'm saying? If we just keep showing negligence, nothing positive is going to come out of this at all. Can I say something Go real ahead. quick about those Marlins is that they are now seven, I think, like, seven and one or eight and one. Really? Yeah, Since man. So happened. maybe maybe the, maybe the casino is <laughs> the way to go. You, just, you need to go to the casinos, man. <laughs> Get a little lucky, but um, but but to give a full answer to your question, um, I mean, if there's nothing, if okay, fine, if you can't do a bubble, cool, whatever, because it's too expensive. But if we can't have something for each team to follow, I don't know what's what's gonna happen with this. Yeah, I think there needs to be a little bit more of education on how, it, you know, it it can spread to another thing. Exactly, because like, it just feels like they continue to have the same thing over and over again, mm-hmm. and. With this amount of people and the freedom that they have, like, I I guess all you can do is educate. What I say is, like, you got to give somebody the tools on what they do with them. It's like, it's on that's, them. that's on them. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But let me actually look up how many people are on a, a roster now. Right, because it's, right, it's, it's hard for me to see how the MLB season is going to finish if all these outbreaks just keep happening. And that's what I'm saying. I wonder and then if eventually, it it... and then God forbid, eventually, what's gonna happen is some a team is gonna travel to a city and play a team, and they're all gonna get it. Exactly. Because if it spreads like, that spread. easy, bro, it, it doesn't watch. sound like it spread to from like team to team though, because the I think it was the Nationals. Let's say that's just worst case scenario though. Yeah, no, that is. Let's say a worst team travels scenario. in and they have no idea that they have it, and then they give it to another the other team. Hmm. Um, so it was a 40 man roster. Now with this one, let's see here. Is it always a 40 man roster? Yeah. So it's always a 40 man wa- roster. Okay. I've always known that, but with the new rules, I think they made it a little bit more. No, honestly, I'm not, I'm not seeing it here. Let's see. Cause they did, they definitely changed it earlier. Yeah. And they changed it recently too. Um, I think they have like a thirty-man roster to the side. Yeah. No. I. Um. I, I can't find it. I thought they had a little bit more. You would think that they would like. I I think they have like a like a subcategory thing. I'll I'll, I'll take a look at it later. But anyway, yeah, no, I I just don't I don't really see <clears throat> them finishing the season the way it it's going right now. Can right. I, I it it just a team hasn't played the same amount of games as another team. Mm-hmm. So how are you gonna outweigh one with the other? Are they gonna have that many double headers? Is having that much contact with another team in the same day a good idea? Is, you know, th- they are going to be seven inning double headers, which sounds cool, honestly, and and like I wonder how that's going to play out. Is it going to be like just more, uh, pitching dominance because this year it's been like that, or is it going to be more uh, offensive? But again, you know, like the way they have to do things mm-hmm. and the, just the logistics of it, I don't feel like they're going to be. I, I feel like the more the more logistics that you do have, the more movement that you do have, the right. more possibility you have of getting it too. Mm-hmm. So it kind of counteracts with one another, but you know, I'm really hoping that it stays because it's been nice having baseball around, but it has. And it, and it, and it's such a shame that we can't 
do anything. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they're able to adapt, like you were mentioning, the yeah. bubble type of thing. And or even maybe just even bubble, make it a I little wanted, bit miniature. I just want to see some type of structure implemented into the NFL, into the MLB. No, I definitely understand that. Like, hockey got a down pack. Ba- basketball got a down pack. The Doing least very you well. can do is something. Mm-hmm. I agree. So with that, uh, I think that would finish off our MLB. Again, it's just a little bit quick here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple shout-outs. From, from, uh, shout-out to Aaron for him. Uh, he can't make it today, but me Sir and Han, we do have the same MVP picks. And a jefe. Aaron Judge. So double Aaron, double A's. I, I, I third that on Aaron Judge. I picked Aaron Judge as well. Did you? I did. Nice. Yeah. Well, Aaron Judge. Bro, man, I seen the way he was like, swinging. He swings like a retard, bro. No way. Hey, man. <laughs> Don't be saying that, bro. Come on. He swing. He he got a nice. Bro, the way he's swinging. What do you mean? That's a home run every time. That's, <laughs> that guy, John Carl Sand, has a little bit of a stiff swing. But Aaron Judge, he has a sweet. He has a sweet swing, but he like has a has a really long load. So when I he like kind of like, goes into I, it, was it you or Aaron that he has brought a big up step. that? Yeah, that step or that little twitch he yeah, does. Yeah, I think Aaron. Brought I see how that could be like a little injury when you're just swinging. Shout out to him though. Yeah. MVP, he's doing very well. Definitely. I think he had like five home runs in like four yeah, games yeah, yeah. or, or five for five day. or something yeah. like that. But, yeah, no, that guy's, that guy's definitely that guy's feeling it. Um, a, a sad thing is, is hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to throw a shout out to the Phillies. Come on, guys, get healthy, <laughs> bounce back. Let's let's get it, man, because my pick is not looking too good. Bryce Harper, let's turn it around, baby. Oh, man. But, man, my pick is All not looking too good. Money. Sheesh. You know what though, D.D. Gregorius has been putting up some numbers while they're losing. So as you know, I've been hope I've been hoping that he can continue to do that, like continue to be a spark for them. But right. uh, no, yeah, it's it's a good season so far. Um, man, we need to talk about Yoannis, but that's an Aaron thing because he's he's a, he's yeah, a mess man. So we'll, we'll keep that let, with Aaron. We'll save that for Brian. But that's a good story too. Yeah. So with that, we're gonna conclude our baseball here. We're gonna go ahead and start off with our basketball. The main reason why we do the damn <laughs> show in the first place. Yeah, we we like this basketball stuff. So with basketball being uh in the bubble. Talk to me. And with all the injuries that happened Ooh. to fulfill what we were talking about before. One, one thing before you go, it's has is this Do you remember? It's like it's like they're magnified more because there's there's only a select teams in in the bubble, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Cause like, let's be real. Like five years ago, if somebody tore the ACL and the Kings, we wouldn't have heard about it. But because mm-hmm. we're in the bubble, it has a bigger spotlight and a bigger magnifying glass. Well, that, well, I think another thing is is that Jonathan Isaac, for example, right? Well, and maybe he's the only one if, that I can speak of at least. He was he was making a name for himself, and then he got injured, mm-hmm. and then he was really making a name for himself this time because everybody was hyping him up like. With with Jonathan Isaac, the, the Magic can can do something. It yeah, be a surprise. Yeah, especially in a bubble. Yep. And then it happened. And yeah. Even though just... like there was a huge correlation that Isaac, Jonathan Isaac was the truth. Like he's he's gonna he was gonna do something yeah. for that team. Um. But 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 continue though with uh. That was that was all that was all okay. I was and th- and that's what's awful about this. Like I wonder if this is contributing to like the injuries. Like mm-hmm. there's a good amount of injuries. Like. Mm-hmm. Um. But with it, uh, we're gonna speak about the. Ben Simmons injury. <sighs> now, I think you were saying that yeah, you seen it. Uh, did you want to say what, what you seen? Um, I seen that he hit. I believe he got a rebound. He dribbled out to the three point line, and what looked like to be it looked like an attempted shot in my eyes, but I just seen like a little bullshit shovel pass mm-hmm. to Al Horford. And um, he was doing a weird motion with his knees, like he was doing the shoot low key. Yeah, and I was I've just seen. like, "What the hell's going on?" But then a when they shake, yeah, uh, that they believe they called a timeout after, and then he was uh, limping to the bench. So I was like, "Oh, like that's that's weird." Like he hurt himself, mm. no contact. Like, huh? That's that's interesting. No, yeah. So what what, what uh, happened was he went for an offensive rebound, dribbled to the corner, passed it. Uh, I think, you, like you were saying to Al Horford, I didn't write that down. Uh, but when the whistle blew, he definitely went, like, possibly past the bench and then straight into the locker room. Yeah. But it was directly after he went to the locker room. Mm-hmm. And so now uh, that happened a couple of days ago. He's leaving and uh, undergoing some surgery to remove a loose body in his left knee. 
Now, Ooh. what causes that loose body was a subluxation of his left patella. Man. Uh, basically, a subluxation because we all know I didn't know what that meant, so I had to look it up. <laughs> it's a partial uh, a partial dislocation uh, of that part. So, again, it's his left patella there. So, probably just, like, healed and he just had that extra body, like, once right. he, I'm not saying it healed like immediately, but uh-huh. something had to like fulfill that space. Most like, uh, you feel me? Like I mean, that's what just I'm thinking. Sounds like typical body shit. I guess I'm no kinesiologist, folks. Uh, whatever. But basically, he's got to get rid of some loose body in the left knee. Apparently, uh, they say that he'll be back if there would if there is a deep playoff run. Um, so, in my opinion, that's the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Like. That's either, do you think he can make a comeback like that, or do you think it has to be the finals? I mean, deep playoff run is either Eastern Conference Finals or it's a knee too, or fi- yeah, that's a for, that's a knee, ladies and gentlemen. That's yeah. no fucking finger, nothing like that is a knee. So, uh, deep playoff run, if it's not Conference Finals or Game One or Game Two of the regular finals, see you later, Philly. No, yeah, I. I don't know about see you later, Philly. I think they have a different dynamic now. But are they better with Ben Simmons? Of course. Uh, but they, they, I feel like they can look better. Joel has been holding his a little own, bit. though, without him there. They got to they gotta worry about a lot. But anyway, it's because they don't really fit. That's the thing. All There's, correct. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. But uh, well, that's another thing. Uh, so, yeah, I think in my opinion that's like – at least the Eastern Conference Finals, but it's also a knee, like we were mentioning. So I don't, I don't really know if he's gonna be able to you do know, that a, much a, for the first game, at least. Like mm-hmm. he just had surgery. Like surgery is a pretty bad. Word. I'm, gonna I'm go ahead and say that's that's finals. Fuck a conference finals. That's game one or game two of finals. If he's coming back, so you're being safe. Yeah. You want bet? You want bet five dollars on that? Five. Let's make it ten, bitch. All right, ten. bet. <laughs> you know what sucks is that they got to make the Eastern Conference <laughs> exactly. Finals <now. laughs> over the finals. <laughs> and that's most likely not going to happen. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, Secured though, and bag. this is why this is why I was mentioning that. I remember I was saying, like, they, they work a little differently. Mm-hmm. Right here. Al Horford, when he's back in the lineup, mm-hmm. 21 points in 30 minutes. Right. We'll see what happens. I'm not saying he's 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 a better passer than Ben Simmons, but mm-hmm. he could pass the ball. That's such a lethargic player, though. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that, huh? <sighs> Look, he just sighs every time he passes the ball because it takes so much out of him. I know. Mean, <sighs> don't 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 be clowning him like that, <laughs> bro. Anybody who should a jumper like that, I'm clowning you all day. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's get on to this next one here. It's going to be the NBA Award finalists. Ooh. The lists have come out. They have. Yeah, so we're going to go one by one here All with, right. the, with the list. I think we've already like talked about MVP in the past, but this is just going to be the final list based off of what we have, or final guess, excuse me, based right. off of what we have here. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, so we're going to start off with MVP. Uh, then rookie of the year. Right. After that's gonna be defensive player of the year, sixth man, and then NBA coach of the year. So for the first one here, we have the MVP. You have Giannis Antetokounmpo, Ooh. James Harden, and L B Rockets. L B J. Now James. we're gonna make this one quick, man, because we got a lot of stuff to to go through. We do. We're gonna make it a pick. Reason for your pick. And then, you're, and then on to the next one. Right. All right, here we go. So, Gifton, for your first one, you got Giannis, Harden, LBJ. Who you got? LBJ, just because of the narrative with Kobe dying and everything. I got LBJ. You want to you wanna say that a little slower there, sir? Oh. I picked LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> you think, I know you picked him, man, for a reason. You LeBron sexual. <laughs> Nah, um, I got LeBron for the I got LeBron for the MVP though. I, right. I was saying that for Colby, but for Colba, for Colba, I was saying that at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I got I got LeBron too, just for just for the narrative. Seventeenth year, mm-hmm. um, usually NBA media falls in love with it, but this guy Giannis is pretty insane with with the numbers and stuff. So I see he how they is. can fall in love with that, but yep. you see it, man. Yeah, but with without without LeBron James, the Lakers. Fall yeah. down and because isn't this and is, with Anthony Davis coming out right now, mm-hmm. the way that he's coming out, which is kind of 
dead. Like he's just, he's like a possum, you know. Like in the fourth quarter, he just starts playing. You dead, just called bro. this man a possum. I'm, I'm serious. It gets me upset because he he's just supposed called to be that him good. a possum. But yes, that's that's my pick. All right, that's it. Can't say nothing. All right, okay. all right we got we go. What's up? LBJ. All right, fine. What's up? What's next? All right, so we got rookie of the year next. Okay. We got John Moran, Kendrick Nunn, and then Zion Williamson. Your pick and your reason for the pick. John ja Morant only because John ja Morant has he's a he's been contributing more and he's played more games than Kendrick Nunn and Zion, and I put money on that. Yeah, you could put money on that because I think that John ja Morant's gonna take it. But I would like to just put an honorable mention into Kendrick yes. Nunn. Okay, at one point <laughs> scoring over Biased twenty points, fan. and then. Of course, he kind of dropped off, and now it's like 15 points. But if he continued to do what he was able to do, and they never <laughs> game planned for him, <laughs> that guy'd be nice. It was nice to see him as a finalist, though. I ain't gonna lie. He was really good throughout the yeah. whole season. Because I didn't know besides him end. and besides him, Zion and Ja, I didn't know who else to throw in there, without I, being biased. I hope he pulls up like how he was pulling up in the first part of the season. Yeah, in, in, in these playoffs. Yeah, because he can actually make a big name for himself, and he could. He's one of the wild cards that can. You know, that can do it. Make it, make them get to that next step. Exactly. Uh, or just even push them over the edge because they got so much talent already. Exactly. All right, so uh, we both got John Moran for that one. Yep. Definitely understand why here. Uh, so the next one is going to, so the next one is going to be uh, defensive player of the year. This is a hard one. We have Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm -hmm. Man, that's crazy that this guy got MVP. See, he, he's gonna get MVP. He's Bro, what if he defensive wins player both? The, That's going to be fucking insane. That'd be wild. That'd be, that'd be really cool. I think That hasn't like, happened in a minute, right? Uh, I think the last time I've seen that is like Jordan. Yeah. Pretty Damn. Cool. I'll, I'll figure it out right now. Right. Uh, Anthony Davis eh. and Rudy Gobert. Rudy. What's your pick and for what reason? Um, Giannis, only because <laughs> if he doesn't win MVP, they're going to give him something. So that's your thing. All right, cool. I I mean, <laughs> the NBA I'm, means I'm the being uh, a thousand percent real. If okay, so if I'm giving it to somebody and I really am truly giving it to like somebody that I believe is, mm -hmm. is a defensive player of the year, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be Anthony Davis, uh, just because he was able to do perimeter as well as interior. He had his own. Um, and and, and he had big moments. They had blocks that won games as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I remember one against the Pelicans. That, that was one against the one. Kings with Harrison Barnes yeah, was cool. driving down four seconds left. Yes, sir. He so, saw the shit out of him, though. So but. he did it in big moments. Yeah. Um, as well as you know, he's a Laker. He's in, he's in Los Angeles. Hopefully, he gets all that. But the narrative. I liked it. Everything. He's he's good at he's the the way his body is, man. He's athletic. Yeah. yeah. All right, you got now the sixth man of the year, which is Montrez Harrell. Okay. Dennis Roda. Okay. That's a good one. And Lou Wings. Lou Wings. Pick. Reason for pick. Uh, uh. Lou will. Lou as much Wings. as I want to say Devin Sh uh, Dennis Schroeder, Montrez Harrell, Lou will. I like Dennis Schroeder a lot. I think he looks funny, but I really like Dennis Schroeder. I've always liked yeah. Dennis Schroeder. But I'm going to go with Montrez Harrell. Ooh, Why? Uh, because you can kind of see how much he's worth right now, but uh -huh. like, like to prove it, I'm not saying that it's based off of that because I know that it's based off of the regular season. Uh huh. But the way that, you know, you know that they're trying to make a brand defense. Uh, we're not scared of you type stuff. I think he's like the cornerstone of that. Um, he he gets all these boards for them. That's really important. Yeah. I don't really see anybody <clears throat> else being an elite rebounder like him. So he's really nice. Yeah. I'm a big fan of rebounding and defense. Mm -hmm. And then. That guy is almost like a 20-point scorer, man. He is. He's like so, a 20 and 10 guy every night. Montrez Harrell, my uh, sixth man of the year. He deserves it. Okay. Big man, rebounder, play some defense. And then you got NBA Coach of the Year, uh, Mike Budenholzer, Billy Donovan, and Nick, the men nurse. Pick and your reason for your pick. Billy Donovan, only because – you gave him a new team with Shy Gilgis Alexander, Chris Paul, and Daniela Gallinari, and everybody else, and he got the seven seed. And the fa and I think it's the fact that with that Oklahoma team, they were giving contenders slash certified playoff teams run for their monies in the regular season. 
And yeah. it was a and it was a Chris Paul that everybody tried to get hit him with the wash narrative. Of, I think he's what, thirty four, thirty five now. Yeah, I think so. Thirty five, and he's still giving it to everybody, everybody. Yeah, no, I I I like your pick a lot too. I was really considering him just because I feel like he had people that he had to ingrain into it mm-hmm. and become a better <clears throat> team than he was la- in the year that's passed with so many different pieces one that's even younger you know what i mean right so uh he is 35 though Ooh, nah. yeah nah, he's coming kind of up there he's, he's so long. good he's long in the he's tooth so bro but he's still doing the Chris damn Paul. thing jeez i'm gonna go ahead and pick nick nurse the reason why i picked nick nurse because they lost their mm-hmm. uh they lost their guy uh i i think that Everybody was kind of counting them down. I think I had them in like my sixth seed. I for sure didn't season. have them in the second. I didn't have them in the second either. And so uh, they were able to make up all these points. They were able to do a lot, as well as hey, you know, the the they lost their best player. Mm-hmm. They uh, improved a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They have like one of the best defenses in the league. Right. And uh, with what they have and what they're able to produce. I feel like he has the strongest case here. Right. Yeah. I mean, I agree with it too. But like I said, I got Billy D. Billy D. Good right old there, Billy D. So we were. Uh, so I was speaking about Nick Nurse. Uh-huh. Uh. Basically, with the Raptors, you have them coming out of the East. Right. Uh. With that being said, I wanted to speak about their title hopes, because you do have them coming out of the East. I just wanted to speak of the type of uh, culture that they do have. Please uh, do. Especially when I was speaking of, you know, Nick Nurse right now. Please do. Um, so for, let's let's just speak mm-hmm. about the title hope without Kawhi here, right. first of all. Okay. So if you think about the Kawhi effect, of <laughs> course Kawhi is gone, and he's the only finals MVP to leave after receiving the award. Right. So they lost their most valuable player right. on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. So that's really hard. If you think about it as well, uh, I think he had like 26.2 points that he that he scored. So now they had to make up for that as well. Right. Uh, they have a history of having the high seed already. So, it, like, what does that mean for the team right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they've had one, two seeds, and also LeBron's on in the East. Exactly. So there's that too. Uh, a, a Nick Nurse. Uh, Nick Nurse said something recently uh, about Kawhi and what he meant to the team is that he did everything that he needed to do skill wise so when it was talking about like being clutch on the on the offensive side mm-hmm. oh th- that was just me speaking that when uh, giving it context here right uh he was locked in end quote right so it was basically having your best player do more as well mm-hmm. to have that example uh and also like he was mentioning uh this is another quote uh players picked up on what he was like putting down end quote so wh- when you're talking about Kawhi Leonard's impact, they're speaking of uh, players like OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, two-way wings that have been improving throughout this time or have some promise right? and it shows sparks of it. right? So this same team uh, without Kawhi is 12th in offense, and last year they were 5th in offense. right? So again, you know, they have that 26.2 points. Lowry, Siakam, Van Vliet, Fred Van Vliet. And Norman Powell have Big Fred. filled up those slots. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, baby Drake. Baby Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I like Big Head Fred, man. Dude, you're speaking of Fran- Van Vliet. Nick Nurse was saying that he's like his side to side athleticism is outstanding. Mm-hmm. And that's a direct quote. And then he also says that he's just got a great IQ. He does. The way that he plays right now, he does show that. IQ. Yeah, for his size, for sure. Yes, sir. Now, my question to you is. In that in that rocket, I mean, in that Raptors team, ro- mm-hmm. <laughs> Rockets, in that Raptors Go team, Rockets. you picked him for a reason. What player do you think needs to step up? Um, Norman uh, Powell, Fred Van Fleet, okay. OG Ananobi, okay. Lowry Siakam. Right. From what they already have, mm-hmm. who do you think is going to be like the MVP this year? Oh, well, maybe not MVP because yeah, you always you know that what you're right going to get from Siakam, too. What do you say? But, like, mostly, like, again, what player needs to step up to, like, kind of fill that role? Who's oh, gonna have, like, okay, the biggest... okay, okay, because you put me off with that. Yeah, uh, that's my, that's I'm going to say uh, Norman Powell, and only reason why I say Norman Powell is because he is the first guy off the bench. And so I feel like one of Toronto's keys in order to winning the finals and playoffs and even winning games moving forward is that uh, – 
they need to they need to set the tone off the bench early. Like the bench has mm-hmm. to be locked. Like those bench players are key when into you're... winning the championship. Yeah, I know you're mentioning coming off the bench and making a huge impact. Yeah. Before this year, his career, well, I guess this is including this year, mm-hmm. he scored about uh, eight eight points a game. Right. Now he has 16 points per game this year. Right. So you're coming off the bench and making that type of impact. Mm-hmm. No, it definitely feeds into what you're saying, but go on. Uh, yeah, like I said, he just needs, aside from them being defensively sound and, and staying to, you know what I'm saying, staying to what they know and staying to their script, mm-hmm. Norman Powell has to be a big leader on the floor when he's out there and off the bench too so that everybody else falls in line from mm-hmm. uh, Chris – Ah, I, I know his name. I don't want to. I don't want to butcher it. What? Uh, Chris, not Boucher. Is it Boucher? Chris Boucher. 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 From from Boucher. Chris Boucher, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, um, and the uh, Terrence. Terrence uh, Davis. Terrence Davis. Yes. From Terrence Davis, you know, he just he needs to be. Um, he just needs to set the tone with that with energy. This this is really cool too. He has uh. Averaging over one point, uh, well, basically one assist. Mm-hmm. So, really, only one has, assist? I, excuse me, not assist, a steal. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, averaging more than one, uh, one a game. So, okay. you know, he's he's showing it on the defensive end a little bit right. too. So, having that come off the bench, yeah, is is really nice. And like you were saying, uh, a spark. He's shooting forty nine percent from the field. Right. So, that's pretty good. It's pretty good for coming off your bench, sixteen point score. That mm-hmm. much. He's gonna he's gonna be a big. He's gonna be a big key to NBA all this. champ. He's going to be a big key to all of this. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree that, that he's going to play a part of it. Um, I think another uh, another guard is going to make a huge part. Who you got? I got, I got Fran Van Fleet, baby. Big head Fred. The same thing that he did last year is what they needed. Baby mama year. Fred. Because he, he was a big like thing when it came to closing it down and yeah. having – Keeping them in the game and also putting the game away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He might not have the shot where it's like dagger. Yeah. But he's a guy that I'm down by nine. I need like a three to, to kind of keep my hopes in there, to, to keep momentum, yeah. to stay with this team, and mm-hmm. he'll get it. Or he'll get to the line mm-hmm. to slow it down. Yeah, because, I mean, since he – I believe it was last year, like, ever, right, ever since his baby was born, his he just – just popped off. Just popped off, yeah, bro. I gotta he take popped off serious. to a starter. Like that that's insane. No, yeah, he's he's super he's, good, man. And he stayed consistent at it too. Just listen to Drake before you go play. Before you go who Houston girls, the way it goes down. Alright, bro. Come on. Vegas Come girls, on, now we're trying to we're trying to keep the list man. All right, man. That's a good one though. Uh shout out to the Raptors, man. They're they're fun they're a fun team to watch. <laughs> All right, though, but we're going to stay with basketball a little bit more here. All right. And I think this is going to be our last topic for one because just just a little quick one, a little little cool one here. Talk to S- me. Something to something to to get to the people here. Mhm. Um let's go ahead and and start off with this women's basketball. Now don't don't click off just yet. All the people. It's a pretty it's a pretty crazy one, man. The the story itself. We do not support any of this behavior, by the way, we are progressive people and we love everybody. Mm-hmm. And so right now we want to talk about, just, I just want to raise awareness. I came across this while I was uh, just, you know, doing a little research here. And Thank kind you of for sending headlines. me this, by the way, because I really can't believe that there are like fucked up people like this out there. Man, you know what it is, is that it sucks that like. You know, people have to people have to like come out and say certain things for yeah. something to get done because it shouldn't happen in the first place. Yep. And then like once it happens, like it 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 takes a lot for them to come out in the fir- in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, you gotta you gotta make sure that you, you know, it took a lot for them to do that. You gotta make sure they take advantage of of like th- of them being like like sensitive enough to let us know about this type of stuff because mm-hmm. now we're able to to do something about it. Exactly. You know, instead of it going being ignored, which is which is tough and you know, it, it it's it's something that's different. Nobody really knows how to deal with this exactly. sometimes. Exactly. But so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh the Texas Tech uh program, they fire Marlene Stallings. Uh she was a the women's basketball uh coach. Uh basically 
She was fired because there was a culture of abuse in the women's basketball program. Which is just unheard of, really. Yeah, man. I think it was, they said, I don't want to say unheard of, but... No, it's it's like it's it's to very, see a to see a woman the, coach yeah, treating yeah, woman, treating go. female players athletes like this that is outrageous. You feel like that you would be able to empathize because you know you're you're a woman. You yeah, know exactly. Know I mean? you're, able exactly. To, you're able to understand a lot more than a, than a man can. Exactly. But now, nah, like, can yeah, you, can you just... believe the way? So let let's continue here. Go ahead. Uh, they have to, they have over the the claims that were made were like I think it was like two years of abuse. Uh, in like season ending in- interviews, straight neglect, by the way. No, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, so like at the end of everything, when this <laughs> once the season ended, then she laid it into exactly. them. And apparently, like there was other sexual behavior going on from the strength coach mm-hmm. as well. What what was he doing exactly? Get them. Um, I think when it like. He's like doing massages. Yeah, he was doing massages to work out, like I guess, just soreness and stuff like that. And he was uh, sliding her, his hand like up their compression shorts Man. and like down their sports bra. That's insane. Yeah, it, it can't believe this kind of stuff happens, bro. Pretty crazy. And and what was happening too is that is that when they were questioning him about it, he didn't really say too much, and then he resigned. Yeah, crazy. There needs to be more done with that, but of course, man. Like something needs to happen with that definitely. kind of stuff. That, that's why I'm trying to do, man. Just raise awareness so that people can be informed about this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, just other claims that they were making is that they had to wear these heart monitors, man. Remember that? Yeah. I'm no kinesiologist, but how how do you keep your heart rate at that ninety percent capacity? How do you, how do you keep how do you keep it up there like that if you're not working out? So they have their heart monitor. So Excuse me. They had the players wear these heart monitors where they had to maintain a heart rate of at least 90 percent of capacity during games. And if they did not, they uh, faced a loss of playing time and they had to do more conditioning too. way to just destroy your team. Their Dude, confidence. Can you that? Every, I No, it's hard to, bro, because wonder, like, this does not happen. Let, let me look it up real quick. What's the highest heart rate you can have? Average. I'm no kinesiologist, but I is that not does you're telling me your heart rate goes ninety higher than ninety? No, no, no. Yeah, so it goes higher than ninety, but it's like ninety percent. So right here it says, uh, you can you can calculate your maximum heart rate by subtracting your age from two hundred and twenty. For example, you're forty five years old. You subtract two hundred twenty, you get a maximum heart rate of seven one seventy five. So let's assume that these people are about twenty years old. So they have a maximum of, of 200. Right. Bro, that means they needed to have a heart rate of like about 180. <laughs> Bro, are they running? <laughs> Can you believe that? That's ridiculous. What is wrong with this person? Oh, man. Can you? I, the fuck? <laughs> bro, something's got to be done with that kind of stuff. That's that's like legitimate, like, like how you were saying neglect. Oh Bro, my goodness. How, how how so another another crazy thing is that there was a uh, 12 of 21 players who left the program I can't believe the AD sat around and just let 12 girls who left the first off Texas Tech is a pretty decent basketball school first mm-hmm. off Texas Tech is up there you let 12 of your 21 players transfer out yeah this is all from uh I think the ESPN article um, I think it's from the Associated Press, but uh, it's on ESPN there. It's uh, Texas Tech fires Marlene Stallings. So uh, we're giving you just a little bit of information. And like I said, bro, it. if this ain't neglect, I don't know what it is. Oh, no, it's, it's ridiculous, man. And so uh, they, they were saying certain things, uh, you know, because, of course, there was uh, like sexual like remarks. Yeah. And as well as uh, j- let's just give you examples and, and then you can kind of. Uh, take it yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so staff and other coaches would uh, be rape players, <clears throat> excuse me, post players uh, with remarks such as fat pig, grossly out of shape, I, gross, <sighs> disproportional. That is, that is fucking terrible, bro. Yep. That is terrible. And when then half the fucking people that are coaching them who are grossly and disproportionate and shit like that, bald spots and yellow teeth and shit. And Fuck then you them. got you got this person here, Emma, Emma Merriweather, right? She came mm-hmm. out. Ooh. Prayers out to you and your family. 
a uh, a uh, center who was transferred to Kansas. So this is one of the players that transferred. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said that she was mocked about her weight in front of the men's basketball players. Oh, come on. Oh, hold up, hold up. And admonished over showing signs of depression. This person was later diagnosed with depression. So the type of influence that Fuck this person her, had, bro. Fuck her. I, you I make agree. fun of her in front of men, knowing that men are going to be men. Oh, my God. That's, that is, men that's sad. Men. That's, 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 sick. that's sick. That's sick. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And that's why I kind of wanted to. Uh, not only bring it to the listeners' awareness, but uh, me and you, we also played on the same team. Yeah, we at did. one point, we did. And I also want to shout out to really good coaches. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. ones that made effects on people's lives. So I had a couple coaches. Um, this is why I wanted to bring up the segment to shout out coaches, and I uh, want you to bring out a coach that made a difference on your life in a positive way. Because, mm. like, that's that's a really cool thing when you're able to have an influence. <clears throat> And yep. you want to do it in, in a positive way or yep. even, like, a small thing, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it meant a lot to you mm-hmm. to bring, like, that type of energy out. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, that type of energy out as well as, you know, it's not it's not all bad, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you definitely want to bring awareness that it happens and, like, don't, don't stay quiet about it because yeah. things can happen yeah, to definitely. avoid this from happening again. But anyway, so back to what I was saying. I remember when when it was, I think it was Juneteenth. And uh, and uh, Coach Daniels, he was explaining how his last name during, is Daniels. Was, yeah, it was during Black History Month. Black History Month. Yeah, because the season only lasts till like a little bit of February, and that's okay. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, there you go. <clears throat> and then he was explaining how like Daniels was like he had like that's like a slave name because yeah. he belonged to a guy named Daniel, mm-hmm. and just kind of level with us yeah, and, cause and then he went to uh another teammate's last name who was turner then he went to my last name uh dover yeah i, was, I wasn't trying to i wasn't sure if i wanted to give it out there yet or not but mm-hmm. it's all good man uh the, it's my name's not really my name's not a slave my last name's not a slave name oh okay yeah i yeah coach daniels coach DZ, coach DZ him, Daniel. Bro. he's amazing that yeah I, li- I, I liked him yeah i, I really liked him only I can't because speak for you, but. coach Cause it's like from from a black man showing that kind of love to a to a, a young African American child. Even though I had my father in my life, that dude was like another second father to me. Because like I never wanted to disappoint him. I never wanted to not play for him. I yep. never wanted to not do my homework so I didn't be able to get on the bus. I didn't ever wanted to not miss a grade check. Yeah, he was my track coach. He let me come to the gym a couple of times. I worked out with the younger kids. Mm-hmm. Like, shout out to Coach Daniels, man. Because of Coach Daniels is, like, a reason why, like, me and Rob are, like, the people who we are today. Exactly. He was able to level with us at that moment and, like, kind of treat us as adults. And, yeah. And tell us, what like, what's good with, with the world and how it is. Yeah. And also, like, we started playing for each other more. And, like, you were yeah. saying, you always wanted to, we were to all, play for him. we were all clicked up, bro, since... We were all clicked up that whole season. We only lost. Yeah, man, one, we, we, we only lost, lost one time, game. and yeah. that was a, that was a preseason game. That shit was awesome. That was a preseason game. Now nah, shout out to to good coaches, Coach Daniels. Shout out Coach DZ, man. Shout out good Coach shit, Jones. Man. Shout out Coach Jones. Um, yeah, Coach DZ, Coach Jones, man. <laughs> y'all, y'all good brothers, man. Love y'all. Nah, man, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be real. Like you're mentioning coaches, and like, man, I forget their names, but like I remember. Yeah, I remember a lot of what they did for me. But yeah, man, I'm trying to remember like one exactly. Man, yeah, see, like I, I don't have like like one. I have more probably teachers than coaches. You, you like you, man, I don't I don't even got the teacher. Thing. Shout out Ms. Villa Lobos for making me not feel like an idiot in <laughs> seventh grade and told me that I can do math. It's just gonna be hard. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, go, bro. Shout out Miss V, wherever you at, girl. I yeah, love I don't, you to death. I don't really have any tissues to shout out like that. <clears throat> kind of crazy, but not nah, like I. I guess that's ended up on a on a on a nice thing, right? Yeah. I think it was a, a very nice podcast. A uh, little bit of baseball, a little bit of basketball. Not too much about football. Uh, really we got a, we got a couple of things to talk about next time. Yeah. But uh, definitely want to keep it keep it short today, just because we're missing a. A dude here, so we missing, uh, we missing uh, Quavo, man. <laughs> we missing Quavo. I'm From, offset. You take off. I, I'm definitely take off. <laughs> if anybody, I'm take off, man. He's the best lyricist out of all of them, in my opinion. Man. Well, I don't know that. Ooh, offset. I mean, I offset kind of nice. 
don't know, but when Quavo wants to rap, when Quavo want to put out a, you feel me? When Quavo uh, want to put out a song, when Quavo put, put out, out a song. Uh, man, a hook. Yeah, he's, he yeah, put out a. Hook. That's yeah, he put out a great hook. Him on the whole song, I'm cool. Burr! All right, guys, appreciate you guys for stopping by. Hopefully, we'll start to continue to give you guys some more uh, content, some good content like this. It felt good. And uh, from Gift Man and Rob, sports you. Uncensored. For you. Support the you. Support, guys. I appreciate y'all. You guys have a good night.